Ladies and gentlemen, we are live. It's your boy Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob in the building. What's up, everybody? Burr, burr, burr. This is RPT season number 12, episode 136. It is Wednesday, 2 March, year of our Lord, 2022. I'm coming in hot. I just landed from Raleigh, North Carolina. Shout out to everybody that attended a show in beautiful, chilly Raleigh, North Carolina. Very peaceful, very green. Not a lot of traffic. Everybody's nice. Seems like crime is under control. Just very, just very like, just fresh air. It just didn't feel like very polluted. Uh, but it was a Sunday show and it, it still it still was thick. The crowd was uh, live. Javi Luna and I, we did a, um, we had a great time, man. Nice. Uh, I'll tell you more about that on Chingo Chats. Chingo Chats. But uh, Legalized Freedom Tour continues. Stand-up comedy all up in your grill. Action, action, action. You know how we bringing it. McAllen, Texas, March 5th. Get your tickets now. We'll be at Cine uh, El Rey. Do not miss out. McAllen, Texas, March 5th. This is brand new tour. Come through. Naples, Florida, March 16th through the 17th. Don't miss it. Uh, West Palm Beach, April 3rd. Do not get left out. Tacoma, Washington. Haven't been there in a while. April 7th. Nashville, Tennessee, April 14th. Corpus Christi, Texas, May 5th through the 7th. Arlington, Texas, make plans, May 12th through to May 15th. Uh, New Braunfels, Texas, May 20th. Abilene, May 21st. Lubbock, May 22nd. Bryan College Station will be there. Two shows on May 28th. Bryan, Texas, May 28th. Two shows. Don't miss out. San Angelo, June 3rd. And, of course, just hit up the website. We also have Odessa, Austin, Albuquerque, El Paso. Uh, speaking of Austin, the people that own Good Nights in Raleigh bought Cap City. No way. Where I'm going to be performing in Austin. Okay. So they own a bunch of different clubs. And uh, so, yeah, there's the connection there between North Carolina and Austin. Uh, Albuquerque, El Paso, Irvine, Ontario, Denver, Oklahoma City, Chicago, Phoenix, San Jose, Brea, Oxnard, San Antonio, Addison. So much more. Of course, we're working on Salt Lake City, Las Vegas, and Houston. That's like 30 cities. Legalized Freedom Tour. Just go to chingobling.com. Y'all know how we get down. We're bringing the funny. We're talking shit. And if you're a patriot and you like that freedom of speech and you're all about America first, then I really need your support. I really need you in the business because, uh, you know, a lot of times the lefty Larrys and the lefty Larissas, they want to boycott your boy. You know, cancel culture is real. So I need all my patriots in the house. Uh, become a premium member and join the agency, the Tamal Intelligence Agency, the TIA. What do you do when you sign up at patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales? Well, you get that monthly subscription. You pledge a monthly amount. You know, like the cost of a cup of coffee. And you are a direct supporter of the podcast. So we grow thanks to you. No middleman. No fucking uh, big corporate entity running us telling us what we can't talk about well besides you know these uh google platforms youtube and you know we have to tread lightly but we want to mitigate our dependence on big tech by gaining your support and we appreciate all the members yeah and with that said shout out to andrea gonzalez who just signed up as we were recording with oscar el blue who we'll mm -hmm. be getting to later on the podcast so you guys are in for a treat we're gonna it's gonna be an extra long podcast kind of today but uh she, she commented on episode 135 inside the patreon and said this is the episode that got me to sign up it's also march 1st i already casted my primary vote Sas 135 episode 135 yeah. what, what were we talking about that was a uh, episode 135 was no new wars Oh, okay. No new wars. I wonder if she was already kind of conservative and she stumbled across us or... Well, it sounds I'm, like I'm she's curious. been listening to the podcast. And episode 135, the teaser is what got her to sign up for the Patreon. She wanted the whole enchilada. Wanted the whole enchilada. So, Chingo Shout Bing, out to you, Andrea. For sure. And also, uh, Rob, I know you have it set up, but uh, make sure that anybody that's just signing up, they know about the Discord. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because that's almost like... Psh, that's really major key. It really is. Because, um, I mean, we got a guy, a guy on there, Juan Big Stoner. I mean, he'd be breaking down some shit. Based tattooist. Yep. He'd be giving us some good game. Like, yo, peep these psyops. Oh, look at this photo. Look at this. Look at this propaganda. Um, SS Sparky always coming through. Yep. Uh, I Skywalk. I actually played uh, yeah. Fortnite with him on Saturday night. Okay, cool. Yeah, so uh, that's another thing. Like, you know, including other other parts, other parts of culture, right? So like video games, entertainment, the stuff that we talk about, including it into this Chingoverse. And uh, that was kind of dipping the toe into throwing it down on the Discord in the gaming channel. Like who's got time, who wants to play? 
Don was at a work thing or at a, at a like a I don't know coworker thing. So I was just free. I was working on some clips. Made that Fat Joe clip, which went kind of yeah, it's doing good. Pretty man. yeah, pretty f- pretty fire on YouTube mm-hmm. and Instagram and everything. And then I was like, hey, I uh, just put up this clip. I got some time. Who wants to play? So him and I played for like an hour. Nice. And other people were like, yeah, next time I'll hop on. So we might do like a TIA gaming team. You know, who never yeah. who knows. And I can't wait to meet y'all in person. Maybe we'll do a live podcast one day. Yeah. We just want to grow it right now, man. This is just all foundation. Right. And the more that Joseph Raheem Breezy be tearing up the country, tearing us apart, he, he want to send y'all to Eastern Europe and shit to defend Ukraine's borders and so on, right? Uh, well, and then also somebody, was it uh, Juan Big Stoner talking about the terms of service that Discord, I guess, had updated? So that's another thing. I, I haven't read them personally. I don't know. I mean, a private server versus you have public servers that you can go on a Discord and just jump into. I don't know what applies to what. I got to go read it myself, but um, make sure you sign up for the newsletter. It's really important. If you're a patron, we have your emails, but it's a separate newsletter than if you just go to chingobling.com and sign up for the Chingobling actual newsletter where we know you're going to have your, we're going to have your info and can keep up with you in case for whatever reason the server went down. Yes, sir. It is all at chingobling.com and every Friday, you know, the members area, which is free. It's just a members area. You yeah. just set up an account, put your email in, and uh, we're dropping new vlogs every Friday. Sometimes I'm a little late. I'll, I'll be texting Rob late on a Friday like, did I turn something in today? <laughs> You're like, nope. He's like, nope. And I'm like, shit, it's still being edited. It's, All right. It's like Friday-ish. Yeah, ish. Um, so a lot going on, brother. After this, I got to go vote. If you have not voted, visit BallotReady.org and educate yourselves on people who want to earn power positions over you. Because yeah. that's what that's what a lot of times, man, these county judges and every all of them, man. If one thing COVID taught us is that, boy, these politicians sometimes be having a lot of say when they take emergency powers. Anytime they have a crisis, I mean, it can definitely affect your ability to earn a paycheck. Look, I went on a tangent when I was on stage in Raleigh. Oh, give it to me. Just real quick, because we're going to talk more about that on Chingo Chats. Um so it was my first show back, right? And I have I have my jokes, I have my script, you know, in yeah. essence. But I always allow a little bit of room to keep it fresh and to rearrange things and to edit. And if I have new ideas, I'm trying to work them in, right? So it keeps it fresh. And um, something possessed me. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was the wine. Maybe it was the long flight. Something possessed me to be like, yeah, man, now they're talking about war. I was like, y'all want to know what war feels like? And the crowd's just looking at me on a Sunday. I was like, y'all, y'all want to know what war feels like? War feels like one day you turn on the TV and they're telling you, you got to start wearing a mask and then masks don't work and then wear two, then wear three and then get the medicine is safe and don't worry, it comes from soup, not from a lab. And if you question it, you're a racist conspiracy theorist and you can get a paycheck and you can't and you're essential and you ain't and so on and so forth. And you, you don't know who's telling the truth. You don't know what's up. You don't know what's down. It's the fog of war. I was like, that's what war feels like. That's what it feels like when you're under attack. And they're just like, you just hear like the awkward, like clink. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then I just see Javi in the corner, just kind of like, oh, where's the punchline, bro? What's funny about this? And I'm just like, all right, I, you know, that wasn't the joke part. That was the speech part. I just wanted to throw that out there and, you know, plant a seed and maybe some of this shit will make sense. But uh, I have to make sure I take podcast stickers or something, or I have to find a way to like, make a joke about the podcast so I could just bring it up, you know, cause it's, why don't you just open with it? Yeah. But I, I, I want to have laughs. I want to have jokes. So I don't want to just be like, all right, a little bit of housekeeping. And then they're just like, all right, he's off to a slow start. What if whoever introduces you, uh, throws it out there before you come on stage? Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so many things have to get tightened up. Like we've been off for a couple months. My wife doesn't know this. But maybe if she starts to notice, like, how many lifts did he take? Because when I landed, I met Javi at baggage claim. He already had his stuff. Um, I had my jacket. I had my book bag. I had my water jug. I had the merch suitcase. And my book bag was already kind of full. So I'm like, all right, I think I got everything. Let's go. And we left. And then it's time to get ready for the show. And I'm like, okay, let me see. Let me iron my stuff. Let me see what I'm going to wear. And I was like, oh, shit. I had a whole other duffel bag with like my show clothes and I was in sweatpants. I'm like, I'm not going up on stage in sweatpants and wonder if my duffel bag is okay at the airport. So I'm like, I need to haul ass, do a big Chicano U-turn, go back to the airport on a lift. First I was on hold with Southwest. I'm like, man, somebody answer the phone, hold my shit. They're not answering. I'm wasting time. So it's literally 
hop in an Uber, go get your shit, rush back. And Javi's like ready. And he's just like, all right, dude, hurry up. Cause like, we got to go. So it's like, I'm just going to hop in a shower real quick. So you had to go, you got, you got your bag though? Yeah, yeah. I had to like go do a 30 minute drive Fuck. back back to the airport, grab the duffel, call another lift, 30 minute drive back to the hotel. So now it's like, we should probably be like, hey, Javi, call the club and tell them like, we'll be there. Like we're on our way. We'll be there shortly. How far is the club from where you were? It was only like 10 minutes, but... But still, like, show starts at 7. At 6, you want to already kind of be there. Settled in, yeah. And, no, I'm arriving back at the hotel with my duffel bag. Fuck. Anyway, a lot going on. Um, We're going to have to... Okay, let me just read the list. Okay, so obviously it's primary elections day. Uh, The Biden administration has asked, very nicely... Yeah. He asked the Customs Border Patrol of the United, this beautiful United States... He asked the officers who have been demonized and demoralized to leave the southern border of America to Ukraine, uh, Poland, according to a new memo. They were looking to see who's really good at processing a ton of refugees and and people moving and migrating. Who's really good at that? You know what? Send American Mida over there on a voluntary basis. So that's some goofy shit going on. Uh, Your homegirl, Nancy Pelosi, on that vodka. You know the, the the genius stock stock market trader, the what, multi-millionaire. What do they call her? She's like a like a stock whale. I think is the yeah, term. Yeah, it's like unreal yeah. how she wins. So Nancy, she wants to um, she wants immediate defense of the Ukrainian border. She's all about strong borders and sovereignty now. All of a sudden, all the leftists they're all about arming citizens now. They they want strong militias. Did you see? The, <laughs> the, I think it was Occupy. <laughs> <laughs> the left wants strong militias. Go on. I think it was occupied Democrats. Was uh, the the tw- the tweet uh, you know defined? Yes. L. Yeah. Was it? Or, yeah. Or that d- account got banned. Oh, okay. Well, it's the uh, occupied Democrats. Like one day they're saying something bad about guns. Yeah, it was like uh, no one should ever have an assault rifle, whatever, whatever. And then below it was like from a week ago. The brave Ukrainians. Yeah, that are you know defending defending their, their yeah, freedom. What the fuck? Come on, man. It it, it to them it fits their narrative of like. Putin is the bad guy, which he is. Everybody knows he's a bad hombre. I'm sorry, call him Putin. Putin, like <laughs> Wait, uh, Oscar, Oscar Blue. Uh, Vladimir Puto. <laughs> Vladimir Puto face. Um, you know, he's worried about Russia's interests. He's being nationalistic. He's had concerns for many years. Uh, he's he's stated them. Like, you know, what's up with y'all surrounding me with this NATO shit? Ukraine right here. I'm trying to pump this pipeline and feed Germany some gas, but y'all surrounding me with this NATO bullshit and the central banks are trying to fucking collapse the, uh, is it the ruble or the ruble? It's a ruble. Okay, it's a ruble? Yeah. All right, that shit. Uh, but then they might go to gold. They might get a loan from China. They might go to crypto. Either way, the central bank's little house of cards is, uh, is in play. So, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, then you have the Defending Ukraine Sovereignty Act of 2022. Who sponsored this Senate bill? I'm glad you asked. And from here, we'll just get into it because the other ones are also fun stories, but I don't know if we'll get to all of them. Um, so there's a video that Tucker did uh, breaking it all down, right? His segment was Democrats suddenly value border security, just not for the U.S. And then uh, maybe I'll play some of that video here in a second. But when I found out who actually let's play this. Is first. this the six point four billion? This uh, Ukraine Sovereignty Act? I don't know. Oh, oh, that they're sending over for aid. So, in- yeah, what's up with that $6.4 billion? Is that something else? I think that's something else. Oh, Lord. But what's the price tag on this Ukraine you know, sovereignty? Zero. Zero. <laughs> you doing some sake math? <laughs> zero. Territorial zero. integrity. Damn these ads. Territorial integrity. It's funny, dude. Like, all of a sudden, the left is about armed citizens. Strong borders. And what else? Um, I don't know. Sovereign nations? Yeah. Just sovereignty and shit like that. Meanwhile, they got all kind of bioweapons labs over there. The U.S. has several bioweapons labs. Yeah. All over the world. I have been hearing that, too. They are all over the country. But it is kind of like a little strange that they're pretty close to some of these uh, target sites. The amount amount of propaganda. Okay. Here we go. go. Let's a little news alert for you. Nancy Pelosi is even more agitated tonight than usual. On a conference call just hours ago, Pelosi demanded that her members vote immediately on a piece of legislation she says is critical to our national security. The bill she's talking about, among other things, affirms the central importance of national borders. Well, of course it does. Without a border, you can't have a country. 
And Nancy Pelosi firmly believes that. In fact, she believes it so strongly, she's directing the Biden administration to develop an urgent new plan to keep the border secure. In fact, not simply secure, but in the words of the new legislation, Section 208, invaluable, meaning impossible to breach, walled up and buttoned down, bulletproof. That's quite a border. But why wouldn't it be? When it comes to borders, Nancy Pelosi isn't messing around. Are you surprised to hear this? Well, you may have misunderstood. Pelosi isn't talking about the U.S. border, the one that's currently open. She's talking about the Ukrainian border, the one that actually matters. The bill Pelosi is promoting is called the Defending Ukraine Sovereignty Act. Its purpose is to guarantee, quote, Ukraine sovereignty, independence, and territorial integrity. These are the things that all countries need. We'd love to have them here. But no, we're going to have to wait. Ukraine is ahead of us in the queue for secure borders. And honestly, you can see why. As they used to say when we were kids growing up in the United States, what's good for the lightly populated Russian colony of Ukraine is good for us. As our oldest and most cherished ally, yoked tightly to the American people by the ancient bonds of friendship, shared culture, and burisma, <laughs> Ukraine comes first. It has to come first. When caravans of undocumented Russians appear on the Ukrainian border, the United States doesn't sit idly by. The United States swoops in with deadly weapons to push these people back. We'll send missiles to Ukraine if we have to. In fact, we already have billions of dollars worth. But wait a second, you ask. Isn't undocumented immigration a good thing? Doesn't immigration increase diversity, the blessed source of all beauty, power, and strength? Well, sure, most of the time it does but not in Ukraine. Ukraine exists for the exclusive presence of Ukrainians. People who look or speak differently, people from other places with say different religions are not allowed in Ukraine, period. That's Nancy Pelosi's position. Ukraine. So it, it's a long clip, but that, that's kind of the gist of it, right? So when I saw that, I thought to myself, who exactly sponsored this bill, right? So I went to, uh, you know, congress.gov and I was just kind of snooping around a bit. And I was like, how did this come on to the Senate floor or come into the Senate floor? And the person that presented the bill was a, a Democratic senator, uh, Robert Mendez. It's a really small print. Mm. Uh, let me see. I got Robert figure. Garza. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm really a Democrat liberal yeah. from New Jersey. Yeah. But uh, so then I was like, all right, who is this guy? How long has he been in Congress? What's he what's what's it all about? He's been in Congress since 1993. Mm. He was a he was a House uh, representative and then senator. Now he's been a senator since 2006. But one of the crazy little funny stories I thought I found uh, on this gentleman was that he got married to what looks like a bit of a little bit, a bit of a blonde bombshell here for his age, because he's like 68. She's probably in her late 50s as well. But you know, it's good looking, and uh, it's it's a nice ceremony they got going on here. But what's crazy about this is that this is in the height of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. This little wedding here, this this small ceremony, as they called it, mm -hmm. back in October of 2020. In New Jersey, where, if we remember, Ian from Attila's Gym in Belmar, New Jersey, was having his gym shut down, being the number one, what, what do they call him? Enemy number one of yeah. all of yeah, New public Jersey. Public enemy number public one. Public enemy number one. A pariah. By the governor and everybody in power in New Jersey. But, oh, we have the senator here having a nice... No masks by anyone in the pictures here. No masks. No masks. No masks. Just enjoying his now life. Now he's a radical masker all of a sudden. Yeah. So uh, I just thought that was interesting. But he is also on the um, seat for foreign committee mm. affairs. Mm. And he's a gentleman that, that proposed this. Uh, it sounds like you, you're saying he's part of the deep state, my brother. Well, you know, if it you know, sounds like a duck, walks like a duck. It might be a motherfucking goose. That's him. <laughs> so... <laughs> So basically, man, we don't know what the fuck is in this Defending Ukraine Sovereignty Act of 2022. Is it is it that shit, the Nancy Pelosi thing that Tucker just talked yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all about their strong borders. Yeah, I'll actually give you the summary Something here. clown show. I'll give you the summary from Congress.gov. The summary is, the bill authorizes security assistance for Ukraine, requires sanctions against Russia if an escalation uh, in hostilities, uh, if it escalates hostilities in or against Ukraine and addresses related issues. Yeah. Yeah. Tucker broke it down, man. Um, that that was like a, like if if anybody. I don't care if you're from the left, like people from the left should be able to be sat down and watch that thing. Obviously, it's it's biased. Right. It's Tucker Carlson of Fox News. Uh, obviously, it's one sided. Obviously, he's he's cherry picking data points to create a narrative. Sure. But the point remains, Nancy Pelosi, the same woman 
who her district, by the way, in San Francisco is like overrun with poverty, crime, Asian hate, uh, mental health, people walking around, shit on the streets, motherfucking needles. And uh, they could run up into Walgreens and ransack it for nine hundred and ninety nine dollars and get a slap on the wrist. You got these bail reform. You got these George Soros backed district attorneys. They're soft on crime and it's going to shit. You have these super rich silicon valley oligarchs that live out there you know what i mean they can afford the highest rent and then they wiped out the middle class and then you got the working class who are like having to spend three grand on a two-bedroom apartment or what have you right so you should be able to sit down and watch that and be like yeah that doesn't make any sense that they're wanting to defend ukraine's borders a lefty might try to like be like well it's not just that chingo and it's very misleading it's actually you know it's because you know they're being under attack by russia and all this type of shit but the fact remains america is more concerned with other other countries borders yeah and that's a problem that's a, that's a big problem you gotta hit that button bro i didn't have it set up okay don't worry about it we had a re we had a big a uh, great reset yeah, we did we had a great reset but don't worry about that y'all um is this true Vasily? Lomachenko joins Ukraine defense. Everyone's reporting it from Bleacher Report to ESPN, Yahoo Sports. Okay. Yeah. I believe it. I believe it. I believe Lomachenko's like, hey, man, I'm from Ukraine, bro. Yeah. I'm about to put on his uniform. He was, I saw a video that was from, I think, like a month or two ago where they asked him about it. And he was just like, look, man, we need, you know, we need peace on earth. We don't need war, this, that, and the other. But, you know, I stand with my people to defend their country and blah, blah, blah. And it gets complicated because you got like neo Nazis over there, too. <sighs> yeah. And then you have these Russian speaking provinces that are like border with russia and if i'm not mistaken vladimir putin basically the, there's um a, again i'm not a geopolitical no we're just we're, strategist we're, we're, no no but from what i'm the lay of the land right yeah is basically vladimir putin told the separatist not 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 Zelensky, not not the uh because remember they had a color revolu uh, revolution revolution recently i think what year was it that they all of a sudden this comedian not again, long was it 14 maybe 20 or? yeah something like the 2016 2014 yeah. or something so they literally just had like this color revolution y'all can do a deep dive on that maybe we'll come back next episode do a deep dive but i guess what i'm what i'm getting at is lomachenko is kind of like well shit man this is my country and it's under attack and regardless if it's the central banks and you know trying to Regardless if this has a lot to do with pipelines, mm -hmm. gas, NATO, and currency wars. Regardless, I could see Lomachenko, you know, busting out them hands and be like, hey, man, I guess I'm going to have to knock motherfuckers out on the battlefield. And then you have the Klitschko brothers also, right? And I pulled up an article earlier that says the Klitschko brothers are included on Putin's 23-man blacklist. I wonder what that means. Oh, wow, 23 men. Um what bothers me a lot about this whole situation is that, like I just mentioned. Propaganda? Yes. I mean, like, if they wanted to honestly try to convince people that this is a worthy fight, that we should get involved, that we should have a dog in the fight, then they need to be a lot more honest. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it really turns me off when all of a sudden they're supposed to just flip a switch, like the powers that be, whoever controls the media and all the levers of social media and the social engineering, they're getting really good at it. Like they're understanding the American psyche better than Americans understand themselves. They're able to literally flip a switch and on lockstep, poof, images yeah. go out. You got Sean Penn out there shooting a documentary, air quotes. Hmm. Um, just like, you know, George Soros, and the Clintons and the World Economic Forum, they're all involved over there. You got Burisma, the amount of corruption. You got the Bidens, Hunter. Hunter was getting a million a month. You see, the, you see the meme, 10% for the big guy, right? 10% for the big guy. You yeah. see the meme of him uh, in his underwear on a couch and he's on a laptop. He's like, when you find when you see that the Ukraine uh, direct deposit didn't hit. Yeah, he's real. Yeah. There's one of Biden making a face and it's a, a, a you know, Joe Biden. And it says, um... What did it say? When the when the country that launders your money gets invaded, yeah, or something yeah, like that, yeah, yeah. and he's got a face. So that doesn't really help me want to get involved. So um, 
how many how many American politicians have their kids and stepkids and relatives on boards of energy companies in Ukraine? There's a good handful. Yeah, and what's crazy is because we as as American citizens, for the most part, unless you're really paying attention, like let's just say us in our audience, that com- compared to the average voter who pay almost no attention to what's going on mm-hmm. or who's doing what. Yeah. You have, let's just say, us and our audience kind of in the middle where, like, you're really trying to keep up with everything, but there's so much going on all day, every day. And you talk about it on the podcast, and you talk about it on Discord, and we try to, like, have conversations all the time. And then you have the people that are in the mix, the deep state, we'll say, right? The people in politics, the public figures, the political figures. It's like, if we don't know what's going on here, what makes you think we know what's going on in Ukraine for real? Yeah. Like, in other words, I think what Rob's trying to say is, Maybe wait a little bit before you change your avatar to the Ukrainian flag, <laughs> yeah. you goofy motherfucker. Please? Like, they just, they just, I, like I said earlier, everybody knows Putin is a bad dude. He's, he's a bad dude. Putin is corn pop. Uh, Putin, everybody knows he's- Put, Putin's he's, a bad dude. Everybody knows he's he's ex-KGB, he's a bad hombre, uh, and then Oscar Blue, who we're going to have on in a minute, yep. um, he also kind of broke that down. However, who was the biggest- uh, uh, was a donor to the Clinton Foundation between like this year to that year. It's like decades. Who? Ukraine. Ukraine and these these oil companies and these oligarchs. They've they're the biggest contributor to the Clinton Foundation, which is just you know shmoney. I got I got to say this because I listened to it all the way through. Uh, alumni of the podcast, Jen Briney, who's going to be living in Austin for a month in April. So we'll probably have her back on in about a month or two when she's closer and times are more aligned. She did an episode on Sunday, uh, Sunday night called uh, Understanding the Enemy, I believe it was called. And she broke down a lot of okay. what's going on in Ukraine and Russia. And she had a lot of the speeches that Putin has been giving throughout the last couple of days slash weeks Mm -hmm. translated broke it all down and it's really it's it's a crazy stark contrast of what we're hearing on mainstream media and again it's not we're not rooting for putin we're not rooting for anybody here we're just trying to understand the lay of the land exactly as shingo said so that so that we know what our lawmakers and policymakers are doing and and why it's affecting us you know we just want to know yeah because if i'm not mistaken putin is literally like every step of the way is basically saying y'all ready for peace talks yeah. No, no. Okay. Y'all not. No, we we do not give up. Okay. All right. Bet. Next day. Y'all ready to sit down and talk peace? No, we are not ready. Okay. All right. Bet. Yeah. And then here's another problem I have. Like they've been here in here in Washington and in America and our media apparatus, they've been beating the war drums. You know, if you own stock in Raytheon, you know what I'm saying. If you're part of the military industrial complex. If you're a neocon, neoconservative, you know, these Cheney, George Bush type people, oh, they can't wait. This is, we about to get back to business. Like, America is back to doing what the fuck we do, which is arms, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, blowing shit up. Yeah, we're back to 08, 2012. We back to the old way of things where we go around policing the world. Eight years, right, of crazy chaos nonsense. We have three and a half years of, like, Hey man, everything's, everything's cool. cool. We got yeah, yeah, we had four years of like Trump walking in, crip walking in North Korea by himself. Not even four years, right? I mean, three at best. Yeah. You got COVID and this fucking sham that too, impeachments yeah. for mm-hmm. the fourth year, and then right back after that, right like crazily right after that, fast right back away. to yeah, what it was eight years prior to that. Uh, buddy, only been in what a year and a month. He's, uh, yeah. he's he does his State of the Union tonight. Oh, yeah. Or probably today because he gets sleepy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually tonight at 7. Crowder's doing a live stream. So if you're a Blaze member, which I am, I support a lot of my content creators that I enjoy. Like you guys are supporting this podcast. So Shout I out to you. Chad Prather on Blaze. Yeah, Chad as well. Love his show. Uh, you know, he's on the ballot for governor, obviously. We'll see how that goes, how much of the vote he, he garners, and, you know, how much of an impact his campaign had over the last couple of months, uh, almost a year. And, yeah, anyway, it's it's... It's crazy stuff. It's almost unbelievable. It really is straight out of a movie sometimes when you hear, I mean, there's that clip of Kamala going around uh, earlier that was completely, I, I didn't know what the context was, but then I came to find out what it was It was about where she was like, and people, vote, she said, uh, elections have consequences, right? And in this oh case, my God. people got what they asked for. Please play that clip. Uh, when people vote, or I could paraphrase, when people vote, they get what they want. They, 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 they order what they want. And in this case, they got what they want. Well, they got what they ordered. I went a little off script. <laughs> I went a little off script. <laughs> I was like, whoa, you went, <laughs> whoa, full stop. 
Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I went straight Steve Bannon. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, sir. Full stop. <laughs> bro, what in the goofy shit was that, bro? Did she literally just tell people, uh, y'all got what y'all deserve because this is what the fuck y'all got tricked into wanting? <laughs> and I didn't know what she was referring to, right? So the best thing I could come, the best conclusion I could come to, because I saw that clip this morning. I don't know if it had anything to do with anything that we've been talking about today, but I think it had to do with Biden's nominee uh, for Supreme Court justice. Oh, okay. Maybe there's some context. But in this case, y'all got what y'all deserve. Yeah. They, basically, they about to print up $6.4 billion and somehow hand it over to Ukrainian oligarchs. And then, and then they just kick it down the road and everybody gets their cut. There's a... I hate to only cite right-wing-ish kind of uh, outlets, but the left... Uh, we talk about that. We watch shit from the left all the time. We play clips from here all the time. None of this messaging is on their, on their publications, so I have to always cite like a Daily Wire or a Breitbart and then be like, we're going to try to take it with a grain of salt. And I'm going to tell you about Breitbart in a minute. Go on. Uh, the, what, they did a big... Uh, they fucked up, and they need to do a goddamn apology. They, they uh, reposted some fake shit, which was uh, the news... Which there's been a lot of this. It was a Ukrainian, former Miss Ukraine has picked up arms and joined as Didn't well. Did she have an airsoft gun? Yeah, she had an airsoft gun. They cropped out the part or maybe they, I don't know if they did it intentional. But basically, um, it was fake. Yeah, and, a lot of the stuff's been and fake. And Breitbart posted it and, yeah. you know, Andrew rolling in his grave right now. No shit, right? Um, do you want to keep going with, with other stuff? Because I kind of wanted to bring up this thing about the Supreme Court justice in this video that, uh, that Kamala had... Uh, I don't know, talked about, I think was in reference to. Okay. Oh, actually, it was this one. Elections matter. And when folks vote, they order what they want. And in this case, they got what they asked for. I went off script a little bit. <laughs> hey, that was me and Raleigh. I went off script a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> <laughs> that that rubbed it right there. Yeah. It reminds me of a comedian trying some new shit and it didn't really work. That's, that, that's what that sounded like. Uh in this case, you got what you ordered. Um I'm so surprised she didn't do the nervous cackle. She at the end she really wanted to. But she kind of went with a little weird different like ha ha. Uh so th this was in reference to uh what's her name? Katanji Brown Jackson. Mm -hmm. Uh yeah, to replace the court justice uh, Stephen Breyer. So let me read a little bit about this because it might go unremembered, honestly, because on Biden's campaign trail, he at some point towards the end said that given the opportunity, he would uh, appoint a black woman to the Supreme Court justice, right? Right then and there, you're just like, what? You're, you're writing off everyone else who might be up for this justice position? And, and go ahead and write off conservative black women or constitutionalist black right. women. Right. The, the, so the, the, the person replacing, uh, potentially replacing uh, Breyer is actually, was his assistant. Say that one more time. Breyer's assistant mm -hmm. is the judge who's potentially replacing his Okay, his who's, seat. who's Breyer? Uh, the he's the person? The, 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 the retiring, yes. His assistant is the one taking over? Yeah. Oh. He's the one that Biden nominated for the justice position. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So Kintaji Brown is a female. Yeah. And then the he is Breyer. Right. And Biden nominated Breyer. Yeah, so... But, but he's already retiring. No, he's retiring. I'm saying he nominated the black lady. Okay. Who was also Breyer's assistant. Oh, okay. Got it. Got yeah. It, got it, got it. But, mm -hmm. uh... You know, I know it's kind of it's kind of jumbled up. But, uh... I kind of wanted to read a little bit of it's this. too many pronouns. No shit, right? You don't get your own pronoun like Stephen Walsh, uh, mm -hmm. Matt Walsh said. Mm -hmm. So, uh... I'm he, him. I It was February 25th, 2020. The night of a crucial Democratic presidential debate in South Carolina. As Biden... And Biden's campaign was on the ropes. In serious danger of being knocked out of the race, Biden was uh, was counting on a promise endorsement from the most powerful figure in the state Democratic's politics, the House Majority Whip James Claiborne, the former chair of Congressional Black Caucus, to reset, to revive his campaign. So up to this point, we still had Bernie in the race. We still had you know like a lot of a lot of uncertainty of who was going to get the nominee, right? So Claiborne was uh, extracting a firm promise from Biden. This was this was Claiborne's uh, plan that night that he wanted to name an African-American woman to the Supreme Court. Claiborne raised the issue with Biden the night before the debate, and he expected that Biden would make a commitment during the debates on national TV. Uh, but Biden did not initially make the pledge during the debate, uh, irritating Claiborne, the journalist, a journalist, Jonathan Allen and Amy Parnes, noted during a break of the debate that Claiborne headed towards Biden 
Allen said Claiborne confronted Biden saying, look, I told you that I wanted you to say that you were going to name a black woman to the Supreme Court. You haven't done that yet. You've had a bunch of opportunities. Don't leave the stage without doing it. This was from the journalist that was there. When the break was over, Biden was asked about his personal motto. He answered, everyone should be represented. That the fact is, well, that is a fact that we should be doing. We talked about the Supreme Court. I'm looking forward to making sure there's a black woman on Supreme Court to make sure uh, we, in fact, have every representation. Not a joke. That was his quote. Not a joke. Not a joke. Not a joke. Clay- this is serious, folks. Here's the deal. Claiburn. Offic- you know the thing. Clay- Come on, man. Not a joke. <laughs> you, you need to have all of them programmed on the machines. Not a joke. You're it's not hyperbole, folks. Yeah, I'm doing that this, this week. Here's the deal. Claiborne officially endorsed Biden the next morning. Biden swept to victory and never looked back as he passed Bernie Sanders and captured, captured the nomination. Well, if he wasn't so corrupt and career politician who ain't never did shit and just fucking pudding brains, <clears throat> then maybe I would take some of the stuff he says with a little bit more seriousness. We're like, oh, well, maybe he really wants a diverse. Maybe he's, he has good intentions. Like, you know, we've never had a black female and, and this and that. But he's just a, a corrupt career politician who ain't all there, and that shit don't impress me. I still don't know how the hell he got the nomination. Maybe they, the deep state wanted a puppet. They wanted somebody that's just shuffling around, obviously. lost, somebody they could control and shit. Uh, uh, obviously. So uh, before we move on from this um, Ukraine debacle, uh, just real quick, I just want to run, run through some things to keep in mind as we're trying to decide whether or not we should put Ukrainian flags as our avatar. Whether or not we all want to rush to volunteer to go over there and pick up arms alongside Ukraine. So why so many psyops? Why so many like fake things like the, the Zelensky pictures from like out of context when he was. Um, did you see that when he was touring the border to go yeah, last see? Year. Yeah. And he mm-hmm. was wearing some green shit. And it's like brave Zelensky. Yeah. So I think I heard Steve Bannon and them say that basically whoever's in charge right whether it's a sort um klaus schwab world economic forum whoever's pulling strings is soros well soros possibly yeah soros had a series of tweets and shit all about ukraine ukraine right. ukraine they were just oh ukraine so whoever's in charge of the media and the propaganda like it's all in lockstep it's almost as if before they set it off you know with russia it's like they had all their assets. It's like there was a Dropbox folder ready to go with <laughs> narratives. Like, all right, you're going to do one about Snake Island. It's going to be one called The Ghost of Kiev. And, and we're going to put photos of Zelensky. And we're going to make it like Remember the Alamo. And Americans are going to be riled up because they love movies. They love Marvel fucking movies. Uh, they love these hero type narratives. And it's going to remind them of the Alamo. And he's going to have fucking super approval Zelensky's gonna have super approval everywhere and they're gonna be like this is a fucking leader like all these man there was rap gangster rappers so many talking heads were like this what the fuck leadership you think Trump and his kids will will go out there and put on a goddamn it's like first of all those photos I was like first of all how we how do we even know (laughs) how do we even know that Zelensky's still there for all we know he's kicking it with the Clintons some goddamn where with George Soros and it's like man just put them on a green screen. Just be like, we are still here. We are here. We're holding it down. We're here for Ukraine. Two things. Mm-hmm. Lots of things, actually. But the, I'll start with these two. Tim Dillon had a Ukrainian comedian on his podcast. Okay. From Ukraine that was armed and, like, defending his country. And he had a get. Okay. Yeah. It was, it was pretty interesting. Um, it's pretty funny. It started off as a bit, but it actually turned out to be real. Mm-hmm. They actually got him on, on Zoom or, or something, Skype, later on in the episode. Um, two, he's actually going to be on Fox Nation with Tucker. Who, Tim? Tim Dillon, yeah. Fox Nation. Yeah, yeah. It was funny because he was talking about it on the show, on that episode. He's is like, that the one where it's like a wood, like cabin type yeah, of set? Yeah, Tucker's okay. YouTube show or whatever it is. Okay. He was like, he was asking Ben, like, should I do it? You know, should I do it? And they were like, he's like, yeah, I mean, why not? What is it? He goes, it's just an hour with Tucker on his YouTube Fox Nation show. So we have, we have that to look forward to. Who knows what that's going to turn out. I think Tim could do anything, you know, because as it is, he's very outspoken. He's funny, but he's also educated. Yeah. And he might be a little edgy for Fox Nation or, or the mainstream, you know, Tucker. Um, no matter no matter who has Tim as a guest, he's always going to be raw, edgy, and outspoken on his own platform. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he don't really need those platforms. But in my opinion, it's like it don't hurt because he's probably going to garner a whole other audience of people that are just like, 
This guy's a little conspiracy theorist. I like him. <laughs> yeah, right. He's like a funny, fat, fatter Alex Jones. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if Tucker just referred to him as Fat Pig, the way that Tim calls himself? <laughs> he calls himself the pig. Oh, wow. I never heard him call himself the pig. <laughs> oh, wait. Mm -hmm. uh, hold your thought where you are. I got my notes here. I got to ask you, why Why is Willie D tagging you in a post on his Instagram? Um, yeah, well, you got a re response to this, Chingo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was misled into believing. He saw He saw a meme, mm -hmm. uh, a, a little quick blip. With no with no context of basically the way the meme was framed was here's Donald Trump saying that this would have never happened if he was in charge, mm -hmm. although he withheld aid to Ukraine. Mm. And what I was trying to, you know, he's like, and then Willie's caption was like, can anybody explain this cockamine situation <laughs> at Real Chingo Bling or anybody, <laughs> any of these Trump supporters, come get your boy, basically, right? <laughs> okay. And but what I, it would be too. You don't get enough characters on on the on the caption on the on the comments to explain to people like, okay, this is from the phone call. I think they ended up getting that money anyway, right? Mm -hmm. He was just basically trying to do a as they will call quid pro quo, which in essence was was wasn't even a bad thing. He was like, hey Zelensky, here's your chance to look into this corruption because supposedly Ukraine has has had um has tried to do a better job of of rooting out some of their corruption right like barisma mm -hmm. so if i sit up on willie d's ca um comment section and mention things like hunter biden it's gonna go over folks head barisma like it's gonna go over their head um if i try to explain to them that donald trump was trying to get to the bottom of the corruption because you know we've been they've been laundering money for the deep state We've been sending too much money over there. Already they would have tuned out. Like, mm. Chingo's fucking crazy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's what that is. That's what that is. And I appreciate the shout out. And uh, more people know about me now. <laughs> so so what I was saying is, is what makes me so dubious mm -hmm. and try, so careful, like you said earlier, we really don't know shit. Like, yeah. the average American don't know where the fuck Ukraine is and all of a sudden the same media apparatus that brought you all these other hoaxes the same ones that had you putting your BLM logo in your in your in your avatar they had you putting your jab fucking your mask avatar they want you to put the Ukraine flag avatar for whatever reason these same people in lockstep are trying to feed you this thing which is like y'all need to care about Ukraine y'all need to like drum up the war the um the the war the war drums we need to send troops over there we need to send american blood and treasure we need to go protect their borders it's like are y'all listening to yourselves are y'all listening that all of a sudden y'all want strong borders and shit and then uh the fact that uh russia got kicked off of that swift thing it might affect america the u.s dollar reserve status it might be a chain effect we don't know how china is going to maybe back up russia there's a handful of countries that are um very strong with gold and commodities and things like that they're kind of like you know been talking with russia in terms of getting away from the central bank and just kind of bucking the system um and then the goofiest shit ever is when you have americans over here saying Throw away your vodka. Get rid of your vodka. You know what I'm saying? Uh, meanwhile, we still buy 600,000 barrels of Russian gas a day. Why? Because we're now energy dependent. We were full spectrum, energy dominant, energy independent. We were about to have more motherfucking petroleum than Saudi Arabia and Russia combined. That is a thing of national security. Biden came in. With the fucking stroke of a pen, he says, shut down the Keystone Pipeline. No more American fuel. He declared war on American energy. He allowed Germany to get all their gas pumped to them via Nord Stream 2 from Russia. Russia got the UK, um, got Europe by the nuts because they're dependent on the oil. What they going to do? Throw away vodka? The whole situation is really crazy because it's made, you know, obviously national headlines. Everyone's talking about it. People are getting fooled into propaganda that's coming out left and right from everyone. Meanwhile, if you're like us and you're just really trying to trying to wrap your head around it, understanding your enemy, again, by Jen Briney on the Congressional Dish, I would start with that if you have almost no idea of 
why Putin's so uh, hell-bent on the whole don't allow Ukraine into NATO, get your forces off of my border, give me some space, where the fuck's our buffer? Y'all surrounded me. Y'all went back on what uh, Bush, Daddy Bush said back in the early mid-90s, which was, um, I forgot what promise he broke initially to Russia or then Soviet Union, but Putin never forgot that stuff. He's like, y'all tripping, and I'm not letting this shit happen, right? And instead of kind of like playing nice or paying, playing, what, what's the word? Uh, di- diplomacy, yeah, I being guess. Diplomatic. Being diplomatic. Being diplomatic. You're letting the enemy, in a sense, go into the hands of an even bigger enemy, which is China. China. Like Trump said, I kept them separated. It, yeah, and it's, it's just really weird. So if, if somebody catches this on YouTube and you're like, you guys know what the fuck you're talking about, you're kind of right, but we're trying to figure it out because we're not hearing it anywhere else. And we're trying to find sources, whether it's Oscar Blue, Steve Bannon, Jen, whoever the hell, to give us better context of everything. And on top of all that you just mentioned, uh, the, uh, you know, Ukraine, they've been misled and they've been given false hope that like, maybe y'all can join the EU. You know, maybe NATO... This, that, and the third. Well, imagine having Russia point military arms at Alaska being that close. Because people think, you, you look at, people are like, Russia's way over there, right? Yeah, yeah. It is and it isn't, depending on what part of the map you're looking at. Mm-hmm. If you're looking at Texas, sure. If you're looking at Alaska, it's only separated by the Bering Strait, which mm-hmm. is like 50 miles. Mm-hmm. And there's two islands in the middle of the Bering Strait. And one of those islands is owned by Russia and one of the islands is owned by the U.S. And between those two islands, it's only two and a half miles. And during the winter, it freezes over. So you could walk over to Russia in the winter. It's crazy. So imagine you got fucking missiles and tanks and everything pointed at Russia. Do you think the United States would take too kindly to that? No. Not saying Putin's a good guy here, but yeah. I'd like to hear what the fuck's going on for real. Yeah, man. And, you know, it's all very strange. Um, like I said, man, just... Why you need so many psyops? Why? Because you you got to have war propaganda. Because COVID's falling apart, and, and the J six committee's falling apart. Yeah, they can only run those two stories on the on American media, but so much. So now Ukraine pops off. They're like gangbusters, clickbait, <laughs> clickbait. Yeah, it's like TMZ's obsession with Kanye. Same shit. <laughs> um, it always comes back to Kanye. Same shit. Do so, you watch part two? Yes, sir. We'll talk about it on Chingo Chats. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Um, are we wrapping up here? Because we got to get to Oscar L. Blue. Yeah, we're going to get to Oscar L. Blue. So you guys, you got to double the podcast on here. It's almost, I think, two hours worth of content. I love um, shout out to Giovanni here, who I just saw towards the end of this episode upgraded to our uh, All Access tier. He's a great patron and a big mm-hmm. supporter on the on the Discord. He keeps the Discord uh, very, very funny. Very lively, and yes. Beat, yeah. Shout out. Y'all are fast with the, with the gifts and the memes, bro. Hey. Hey, speaking of, yes. those coconuts, one with the Astros hat. Oh, yeah, we got to repost that. That's funny. Yeah, do you have it saved on your phone? There's so many, uh, I might. There's so <laughs> many things going on in the Discord that I'm going to have to scroll to go screenshot it. Yeah. And um, I'm not allowed to post political things on my Instagram because we're actually trying to like be monetized and shit. So I'm going to suppress my voice. Uh, make sure y'all follow at what did he said. Which is still fire. Yeah, because my wife is like, you need to be promoting McAllen. You got McAllen coming up and you your story is all full of goddamn political shit and you need to push. You got Naples coming up. You got West Palm Beach coming up. And I'm like, woman, there's a lot at stake right now. That's not coming from your wife. That's coming from Mighty Soul the Manager. Mighty Soul the Manager slash my wife. <laughs> well, hey guys, a uh, very special guest right now coming at you via Zoom, Oscar L. Blue. For those that know, y'all know how Oscar gets down. He's always in the nitty gritty. He's always boots on the ground. He always has first real info about what's happening with migrants and everything going on. He was recently robbed at gunpoint in Guatemala near a volcano. And he's here to tell you all about it. Budo RPT. Ladies and gentlemen, RPT season 12, episode 136 coming in hot. We have a special guest via zoom from an undisclosed location we have oscar el blue good morning good morning chingo thank you so much for the invitation to your beautiful platform say hello to everybody over there for sure for sure we have producer rob in the building what's up, everybody i'm not on camera i'm just off to the side you can barely see me hey so uh <laughs> could we dive into the uh, incident that happened while you were filming a documentary yeah please oscar tell us about what happened man uh i got sent uh we went on this project uh, to Guatemala, and then from there, I was going to go uh, broadcast and report on the borders of Corinto uh, with Honduras. So we were going to travel the three countries. Uh, we entered Guatemala, uh, you know, at late in the afternoon, and we were 
escorted uh, in a private driver to take us all the way to the capital of Guatemala. And as it's a five hour drive. So as we were going through uh, late at night, we passed through. One of the things that I wanted to broadcast is why migrants are leaving their land because of natural disasters. And, you know, the left is pushing this narrative of climate change, climate change, climate change. So I wanted to go to places where they have happened, natural disasters, and people have exited. So we were driving by, and we saw the volcano. Guatemala has the most volcanoes in Latin America. It has more than 12. Mm. So volcano was exploding late at night. It, had, it, had a, it was active. Uh, so uh, next day, we said, you know what, let's go to the volcano and let's uh, do this, uh, you know, document, the, the, let's document what, what we have to do. Uh, before that, we knew that the area was, uh, you know, was friendly. They told us that it was friendly. There was authorities all the way, you know, passing by and, you know, you know, just protecting the area. So we got there and the first thing that we saw, it was a community that it was submerged by an eruption that happened in 2018. More than 900 people died on this eruption. So it was a big thing. So we were re we were recording as I'm saying we. I had a photojournalist by the name of Jose Torres. Uh, he works for Routers. So we were working together. Uh, he went in uh, into the community submerged. So I went in. I started recording. And far away, we saw a woman that she was saying she was the only survivor. It was a little home that she had right there. We started doing this interview. <laughs> And she sold us this sob story. She is part of this organized crime. She started telling us that uh, her family died uh, that and, and that day. Uh, her four, four children were submerged, and the whole community was submerged. And then on top, there was a church with you know crosses that they were being put as people that they have died there, and they were submerged there. So after we finished the interview with her, we went up the hill. Uh, and my colleague went to the left, I went to the right, and I started explaining to my audience, this is what is going on, you know, I told you guys that I was going to bring you to a submerged uh, part, and all of a sudden I hear people running behind me, and I hear a click, and I saw this guy with a shotgun pointed at me, and I immediately, you know, they start telling me with profanity, kneel down, kneel down, I said, like, all right, whatever you want, I'll kneel down. Uh, and they started taking all my stuff. As soon as they saw that my colleague was on the left side, they started saying, get up. I got up. Uh, they took us to him, uh, towards him. They made us kneel down again. Uh, this guy had a shotgun on the back of my head. Uh, and at that moment, I particularly flinched. I said, I can, I can do something. But uh, in my mind, I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep with the life. I'm going to try to continue to record these guys. Uh, when they told us to, you know, to, to look to the other way, we saw six other men all the way to the mountains and they were camouflaged and wearing and carrying shotguns. So it was not only two, it was, it's a whole operandi that they have over there in the mountain. They took away all our stuff. They sold everything. Uh, but there was a particular moment, Chingo, that I will tell you that, uh, we, uh, I really thought that he was going to pull the trigger. Uh, he told me lastly, uh, get up. Uh, I got up, he told me, turn around, uh, and I started praying, and I started telling him, hey, tranquilo, tranquilo, you know, take it easy, you already got all the stuff, you don't need anything more, uh, and, you know, uh, he let us go, he said, you know, get out of my, with profanity, get out of my land, uh, we got out walking, not running, walking at a fast pace, and we asked for help in the main road, and that's basically the incident from there, what happened. The whole corruption, Chingo, of Guatemala, how they wanted us to stay quiet. Uh, later on, we managed to get our cell phone. We managed to get, uh, because I asked him, I asked the guy when he was getting my wallet, I told him in Spanish, uh, déjame mis identificaciones, just leave my, my IDs, please. And he left me a debit card, my IDs. That debit card had a little bit of money. And they got us into the main road. We bought a phone. Then later on, it was a full corruption with the Secretary of, of Tourism from Guatemala. He wanted to keep this case isolated. He did not want it, this to get out. Uh, also, the Consul of Mexico uh, in Guatemala was like, hey, let's calm down. Let's send me your location so we can come for you. I'm like, uh, no, I don't trust nobody. And we went on uh, 
thank to God that we had help from uh, mainstream media over there that is called Nuestro Diario. They were the ones that picked us up. They were the ones that took us to our, our Airbnb that we were staying in the capital. And on the next day, we left. It was a really horrible incident that we had. Man, that, that was scary, brother. That's very unfortunate. And um, besides, so how long were you in Guatemala? And were you able to, like, once you got out of there, what did you continue to document? What, what else did you see? Uh, the, the, I was there for two days. In the capital, I was there for two days. Uh, we arrived there at night. The next day, we were going to broadcast how the Biden administration is saying that they're not deporting unaccompanied minors. And we already had access to go to the airport of Guatemala where they are returning unaccompanied minors from the United States of America. So that was one of the things that I wanted to do, you know, broadcast that they are returning unaccompanied minors from the United States all the way directly to Guatemala. But it changed, it drift. They changed the flight, so we had to go to the volcano. After that, we got in contact, like, uh, you know, we, we went to the main road. A police, National Police of Guatemala helped us out. Uh, we were stopping cars for help. Uh, they got us into the main road. Uh, they, we got in contact with the, uh, with the consul of Mexico. He contacted us. Uh, the phone got, you know, uh, released. We let, we, uh, you know, I passed it to one colleague in Mexico. He helped us out with the consul of Mexico. And the consul of Mexico told us, you guys need to get out immediately. Like, we need to take you uh, out of the country because this is, uh, there's something more in the volcano that you guys just broadcast. Uh, as we were going to the main road, Chingo, there was guys that sell watermelons and they were telling us that we were really lucky to be alive, that all the time these people, uh, they assassinate individuals as they are assaulted and they bury them in the mountain. Uh, most recently, a family was uh, raped. Mm. Uh, a woman and a child were raped in front of the husband. Mm. Uh, and an American journalist and environmentalist went over there to, you know, do some documentation. Also, she was abused and uh, and hit and stole all their property. So this is a uh, an activity. This is a really historical place because it has a lot of things that you can document and a lot of things that you can bring into light. But these you know, these operations of, of bandals, they, you know, they make you just leave. And then it is really in a secure area. Later on, the Secretary of Health knew, the Secretary of Tourism knew that they were, he told us, uh, we know that there's a woman there oper operating mm -hmm. and we know that there's people operating over there. So immediately, am I, am uh, I still? Yeah, your, your we video hear, went out. Yeah, we hear you. I don't know what happened to your video though. I stop. I stop. Oh, right there. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, so the Secretary of Tourism uh, told us, you know, we know that there's an operation there. And we were like, if you know that there's an operation there, why you haven't done anything? So it really... You must be getting some calls or something, Oscar. Yes, I'm denying it right now. It's, it's a... <laughs> it's all spam? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, uh, it really uh, it, it it trickled us to try to uh, to understand that there was a lot of corruption. Did you get any kind of responses from them, like any answers of, of why they hadn't really done much or why they just keep letting it happen? It, it it really it went. This news went viral in Guatemala because of the urgency of the journalists. Uh, it went all the way up to the to Secretary of Exterior Relations. And they made they made a conference. The journalists from Guatemala started pushing it for people to just do something. Uh, and immediately, because it got it went viral in Guatemala, they arrested the woman. Uh, they're doing investigations right now. They already identified the two gentlemen that they are uh, that they were in the video. Luckily, we had to record them. One of them, uh, they uh, one of them supposedly has two murders on his belt under his belt, mm. and the other one has a rape case. So these are not your typical average, you know, uh, you know, little criminals. These people, uh, this is the way that they operate. Uh, and supposedly there's an investigation going on right now in that area. They released the military. This is why the Secretary of Tourism did not want it. They wanted to keep this case isolated because they wanted to keep their operation going. After this got out, they pushed, you know, mainstream media pushed. For, uh, for the authorities to release the military 
into this particular area. They release, uh, they're doing raids right now. Uh, they have the whole area secure. So in a way, we did something to bring into light of what was happening over there. So what what do you think all is happening in that in that area? Is it uh, some drugs, uh, human trafficking, or is it just they hide out and rob journalists that, that come? No, there's a whole operation. They have told us that they have uh, a lot of trafficking all the way uh, on the top of the volcano. There's a lot of drug trafficking. Uh, and there's a lot of illegal activity in terms to drug trafficking and gun trafficking. Mm -hmm. So I believe that that was one of the reasons why they told us, you know, we need to keep this case isolated. That's mm -hmm. why nobody was, you know, going over there and protecting the people that they were doing this, you know, uh, investigations. We're just, you know, pieces of the sand of what this huge thing that is behind the volcano that is operating. It is this. Uh, a, a, ta a ghost town really it is a ghost town and they're taking advantage of that to put these all these illegalities in that city all the way to the bottom there's another community but that community does not go all the way to the top not because of security reasons they don't have nothing to do over there so uh now we understand how uh, how aggressive why the authorities were so aggressive with us trying to get our apple ids because they stole our phones so they were telling us, hey, can we get your Apple IDs? We want to track your phones. And we're like, no, that's all, all our information. Mm -hmm. uh, also, they try to tell us, uh, they ask us, uh, your address right now, where are you staying at? We want to send some authority so we can you know, protect you. Uh, the government will protect you. We're like, no, we're, we're not giving you wow. our, our, you know, our address. And the most one is that you know, we want to just don't communicate with nobody. Just don't say anything to no media because we're trying to protect you. They go on this wing that we're trying to protect you but they were not absolutely trying to do that that's almost like that's the big story there the big story yeah. the big story there is like the corruption and how the government is well aware of everything that's going on there but it's just like a one hand washes the other kind of like yeah you know uh, hey man hey oscar uh, uh tell me where you're staying brother can i can i get your apple id yeah it sounds like any government that says we're, we're here to protect you we're gonna take care of you always perk up your ears anytime they say it's for your health and safety yeah <laughs> red flag uh, oscar so how did did you get to keep your phone did they also let you keep the phone that you were actually filming with no 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 they they sold it everything they sold uh, i had I had almost guys like three thousand dollars of equipment. Uh, that's what I had, and and I have worked for my equipment for you guys know for almost four years now, broadcasting you know, the immigration issue. All my equipment got stolen. The, the The situation was that I was recording. I was at a live video on YouTube, and they told me to you know put everything down when they told me to kneel down. So I had I had the phone on my hand, and then he told me give me the phone. So when he gave when I gave him the phone, he wanted to unblock the phone. He could not unblock the phone because he did not have the code. So he told me, unblock the phone. I unblocked it, and then he blocked it again. He said, like, take this code out, you know, just unblock the phone. So I received the message on my, on my phone when I was, you know, trying to find a way to take away the code. And then the message is said, uh, one of our moderators said, uh, hey, uh, hurry, Oscar is being robbed. So I knew at that particular moment that they were watching that. So I ended mm. the the live feed on YouTube and I just gave him, I said, you know what, I'll, let me give you the number of the code on my phone so you can take it. Wow. wow. Hey, man, you're very lucky. Uh, some good, quick thinking. Uh, um, you know, I know for a second you were like, ¿Sabes qué, güey? Luego quita la pinche pistola. ¡Tas, puto! ¡Tas, tas, tas! <laughs> pinche Oscar Rambo. <laughs> At one moment, I, you know, I luckily... Uh, life has, you know, everybody knows how to defend themselves with their hands. Uh, but uh, uh, in one moment, I thought about it. Uh, but uh, mm. as my colleague said, yes. you didn't know where there were six other people in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And also, we don't know if this guy's going to pull the trigger or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. So and, and, and it's the anger issue now, Chingo, that we have now that we're dealing with. Uh, you know, at first we could not get any sleep uh, and we were having some kind of issues with that because it's, it's the anger issue. First, you're in shock of watching it and, and seeing all this stuff. The second the second thing uh, that we're trying to get rid of now is the whole anger issue because it's really 
it angers uh, us. It, ang- it angers me, and particularly that I could not do anything. And, and, you know, in those situations, then everything got stolen from me. But luckily, we have a lot of support from the people and, and our network has been supporting us. So we are back. We're going to go, you know, jump back on the bandwagon and be reporting again. Was this your own uh, project, Oscar, or did somebody send you out from like a, a different publication to work on this uh, documentary? Uh, it was uh, Real America's Voice News and also uh, uh, Wendy Bell Radio Network. I was going to work for them and also uh, for me, for myself. So it was three, uh, three types of, uh, you know, broadcasting that we were going to do. Wow. Now you're at home putting tape around your hands. Me las vas a pagar. <laughs> Así, pinche camo. I'll go with you, fool. Hey, we'll get parachuted in. Andale, cabrones. Just crawl on the ground. Pinche Steven Seagal over here. See? Nah, I've seen too many action movies. So um, a lot of stuff is going on, man. Like, um, you know, Biden's policies. A lot of, you know, Latinos, Mexican-Americans, you know, especially border towns. Well, today's primary day. You know, so the we're, if we're talking about voting, there's a lot of us out there that's gonna be casting their votes today. How long does that last? Today's vo- today's an election day, so early early voting's over, and today is the actual so this, primary election. That's it. Yeah. At, tomorrow, yeah, yeah. The chingas, yeah, you can't yeah, vote yeah, no more. No, a la madre. Okay, I gotta go do that after this. Yes. Um, it, h- h- how do you feel? Um, everybody tuning in, we have a lot of new listeners every month because I think people are slowly starting to, you know, see like, wait a minute. Something just seems off. Like they keep lying to us. Everything is lie. Everything is psyop. Everything is propaganda. Even this Ukraine war stuff. We're going to talk about that um, after you know after we talk to you. But like so much fake stuff. And and what feedback are you getting on the ground? Like what are you hearing? I know you travel a lot. But what's what's the uh, zeitgeist? Like what are people saying out there? Well, in terms to in terms to the border security. Uh, it is it is so shameful uh, what is happening to the United States and in, in the propaganda that the mainstream media is releasing and not the reality of what is really happening. Uh, the most recent activity that, you know, it is happening at the borders is people from all across. Now it is all across the world. A lot of people are saying it is only it was only Central America, South America. In my last trip, before I crossed to Guatemala, I interviewed people from Iran, from Yemen from Palestine, from Pakistan. Mm. Uh, but there's a vast majority of people from Russia that they have been coming. Uh, mm. And through the borders of Tijuana to San Diego, more than 8,000 people have been apprehended of Russians into the United States of America. Uh, the thing that I see right here, Chingo, and the statements that Joe Biden has released lately with the Ukraine and Russia situation, he's using now the word global uh, a lot global economy, global this, global that. That makes me think that possibly Joe Biden snuck in the global compact of immigration like Barack Obama did in 2015, 2016, 2015. Uh, He snuck in the global compact of migration. That means complete open borders without the citizen, American citizens knowing that they have an open border and they are massively receiving people uh, through an irregular entry to a non-port of entry. If he's using these kind of terminologies, that makes me completely, you know, understand, it is completely understandable that he is part of this globalistic, you know, agenda. The most sad thing about it is that a lot of American citizens are, there's a lot of smoke screens that they're creating for them to be, you know, just contrasted on and just focus on. But the most that they are driven away from the reality that they're trying to turn uh, the United States into a globalist country. What is that? Make everything the same. Everybody exactly the same. So if you're seeing Mexico has open borders, Central America has open borders, the whole continent of America has open borders. Now you go to Europe and a lot of countries in Europe are happening that it is part of this new globalist, you know, agreements of, of countries and leaders. So the, it's, it's, it's going to be too late if U.S. citizens do not wake up to what is happening in their borders. And it's going to be late and to a point that they're going to see, like, wake up and like, what the hell happened? When did this happen? Because we, we did not know that this was happening, but actually it is currently happening to you guys. And there's a lot of, pop, there's a lot of population coming in. The most aggravated thing, Chingo, it is that the cartel organizations and the organized crime on the other side of Mexico, 
Now you get them the authority to think that they own the other side of the land. And that is when you have a problem. You open that door. Joe Biden opened that door for these people to just continue the trafficking of people. And because now it is a relentless multi-billion business, if you try to put a stop to it, they're not going to stop. They're going to tell you, no, 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 no. This is my business. You're not going to stop to it. That is what actually has been happening in La Jolla, Texas, Roma, Texas, that actually the cartel is shooting back at the border agents and the customs. So you never saw that continuously happening before. And now it is happening. Why? Because the current administration opened that door for all these things to continue, all these illegal things to continue. And the bad thing about it is that in Mexico, the cartel owns the government. We know that. Runs the government. They pay out the, the you know district leaders. They pay out mayors. They pay out governors. If this is continuously happening in the United States of America, what makes you think that a lot of politicians are not corrupted and not being paid out now? So those are the kind of things that they're aggravated for United States border cities, that a lot of these organized crimes are really involved now with American politicians. Mm -hmm. um, the figures that, that they put out, they'll say like, uh, what, what do they say, like 2 million uh, this year? Of undocumented. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, I guess last year, right? Because we're at the beginning of a new year. Um, do you think that's accurate or it's like way bigger? Like just I think amount. that it's the gotaways. Uh, you know, we had had uh, a lot of information of, of how the United States Customs, they put uh, numbers and they always increase it. They always say that it's almost 300% uh, more. So oh. more than that. 300%? Yes. There's always saying that it's almost 300% more. That is almost, you know, they only apprehend what they see. So imagine that, Chico. All the getaways, they, they, they call them. Mm -hmm. They got away, yes. But the most aggravated thing about this thing, when they released, when there was the flights going on, that this flights, be, the people being delivered and flown all over the country has been going on for more than a year. And Fox News said, oh, this is breaking news. It's not breaking news. It was being, it's been done for more than a year. The most aggravated thing that the United States Customs said, because the Biden administration has been releasing numbers that they are supposedly decreasing the entrance, and it is a lie. They said, this is a complete lie, but the most aggravated thing is the unaccompanied minors. And they release a, a number that is just astonishing. Between the fiscal year of 2022 that starts on October of 2021, and it ends up in September of 2022. On this fiscal year alone, more than 38,000 unaccompanied minors have been apprehended in the borders of the United States. You're talking about a humongous number of unaccompanied minors. And the problem is that now you have all these Catholic charities mm. that they are involved in NGOs. Remember, not because it is Catholic charity means that they are with the Catholic Church. It is a charity of the Catholic you know, Church, but it's not the Catholic Church that is involved. So a lot of these NGOs are coming in and they're the ones that they are in charge of distributing the children. God knows where. Mm. That is the... That is the other thing that is really uh, precisely a lot of journalists have been trying to investigate that. But immediately in the United States, they have this, you know, uh, agenda to not, uh, you know, to not get involved with these. Uh, they have their own rights. Uh, you cannot, you know, get involved with them because, uh, you, you know, they, you will end up with a big lawsuit uh, and all this kind of stuff. So it is really a big wall between you finding out where are these children being distributed? So that is the, another thing that the Biden administration does not want to talk about, that they're provoking all these unaccompanied minors to continue to travel. I've traveled with many caravans, you know, and I have seen many unaccompanied minors as they're coming. And they, they will tell you the horrible situations that they have gone through because it was implemented on their mind that Biden was going to let them in. So that is a huge number that a lot of people don't know about. That's just one of the many, 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 many travesties uh, of the results of this uh, selection. 
Hey, Oscar, uh, we, we probably asked you this last time, but uh, if you could tell like uh, a college liberal right now in the United States that's saying, you know, we need open borders, uh, free speech is dangerous, uh, all, you know, all these no, crazy... No human is illegal. Yeah, all these crazy talking points you hear them bring back, even those are the same they, people they saying... They can't deport us all. <laughs> e e e bling. The ones that are also <laughs> saying bring back uh, masks on campuses, all these crazy things. What would you tell them? Just there like is a, a room order. in my house. Go ahead, go ahead. There's a room in my house that you can stay. <laughs> Come and live with me for one month, and walk with me, and I will and I will give you the the cost of the the, the ticket to go to Tapachula and walk with the people in Tapachula, so you can see a kid bleeding from his feet. You can see women as they're giving them their stories that they were raped in the Darien Gap in Panama. You can see men watching their women being raped, telling their stories. You can actually hear people from Africa telling you, uh, you know, I saw my friend die migrating on a boat on the Mediterranean Sea. You can come over here and walk with me. All these journalists, uh, you know, liberal leftists, uh, progressives, that they just write stories on their desk. And they say that, you know, it's unhuman with everything that is happening. Open borders in the United Nations are provoking this. The globalist organizations with their pushing this migration agenda, they're the ones that they're provoking for people to suffer and walk to nine countries, 10 countries. If you wanted to fix immigration, making people walk to nine, 10 countries, it is not the way to fix immigration. So I invite you to come and live our lives, live our insecurity lives, we, you know, walk out of our city and see dismembered bodies everywhere. Uh, watch a war, a cartel war late at night. Go to Venezuela and get electrical shutdowns and don't get water and don't get gasoline for two to three weeks. Live out of $3 a month in Cuba or also in Venezuela. Live out of dictatorship in Nicaragua and try to live at late at night with shootings consistently and, you know, abusive behavior by the government. Try to do that. Try to get out of your comfort zone and experience the real life that you are so much defending of. When you experience it, just, you know, you can sit down in the comfort of the United States and tell me the opposite. Yeah, so what they're promoting leads to everything you just described. Yeah, very just well Just the mass <laughs> movement of people, um, you know, these, uh, I guess, illegal transnational thugs are the ones getting the money f for moving in these commodities of humans. And then, you know, their journey is dangerous. It's just like a, a human, it's a human travesty. And unfortunately, you know, like Rob said, the young college educated kids, you know, the Latinx, you know, <laughs> that's what we're taught. Like these Marxist, globalist, socialist, whatever type of ideas where we're just like, oh my God, you know, coexist. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, my God, Beto O'Rourke, take my weapons. <laughs> you know, so unfortunately, man, the propaganda is powerful. And a lot of times the way these ideas are packaged and sold to the American people, it, it's like um, tugging at the heartstrings. So it's like, you know, open our doors like we can we can absorb everyone like we should be able to take care of everyone. Meanwhile, you have like African-American communities that are just getting like literally shipped to the back like like pushed to the back like you're gonna have to wait and then you got like mexican americans american citizens whose their kids can't get um what is it like head start educational mm -hmm. things where it's like sorry illegals come first and after a little while even the raza like the acá starts to wake up and realize mexico don't care about me i'm not a mexican citizen they right have, there's no reason for them to care about a pocho like why why have we been so um I guess psychologically abused because we're so proud. That's like we love tequila, we love Vicente, we love tacos, and you know my parents are from Mexico. It's ice cream way. No human is illegal, and it's like, bro, you're just falling into the the Clintons, the rhetoric, <laughs> the, the Clintons, fucking yeah, you, master plan. Basically, you got these Epstein pedophile type people taking advantage of the kids. You know, you got people in the Darien Gap taking advantage of the women, making money. Uh, you got human traffickers. You got brothels in Houston. You know what I mean? You got prostitution. You got pimps. It's just like fentanyl. Seattle, Washington right now, there's like 
Like you've seen every other major city. You see it right here in Houston by the, by the damn Midtown Greyhound bus station, Philadelphia, L.A., San Francisco, Portland. There's all these major cities, Austin, Texas, with like homeless, mental health, fentanyl use, people walking around like zombies. And it's due to a porous border where the immigration has been demonized and demoralized and they're bumping heads with upper management. You got DHS and Mallorca's not doing their job. You got Kamala yeah. looking for uh, root causes. All the while, my boy Oscar out there getting robbed trying to give you all the damn info. And if we don't set up a give, send, go so my boy can get his equipment back together. For real. Shit. No, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we, we uh, for- fortunately, we, uh, we got a lot of of, uh, of support, but thank you so much. We got a lot of support from our audience. Uh, one thing that I want I want to tell you, Chingo, that you just said that is really important. Uh, it is right now the population, and this I heard it from a politician when I was in Tapachula, and, and he was actually correct. I never thought about it this way. the The world right now, your country, the United States, and Mexico, uh, it is right now supported by the generations of 30, 40, 50, and almost 60 year olds. So they're trying to eliminate that gap. That is the gap that they're trying that they're ha- they're, they're having a really hard time to indoctrinate, to tell them, you know, it's okay to have an open border, it's okay to uh, to uh, to have this mass migration, it's the mandates, all this kind of stuff. They, that is the generation that they're having a really hard time with. Your generation, mm-hmm. my generation, that we know what life was before her all this nonsense that came in and all these new generations that they're coming in, that is the new indoctrination of the generation. That is why I'm thinking all these 38,000 kids, all these people that they're coming in, it is the new generation of this new indoctrination in the United States of America, that they're going to feel I'm oppressed. There's uh, you know, critical race theory. Uh, there's, we need to, these mandates. We need this, la, 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 la. At the meantime, we are heading out and that is the thing that they're trying to clean up. They're trying to get us out for this new education to, to come in. So it's really dangerous what is happening to the United States. Yeah, it's like a, a power struggle in a way of ideas, you know, culture war. And, you know, the stuff that Trump said at CPAC the other day, it's almost like he's waiting for people to open their eyes. You know what I mean? He's just yeah. like, you know, I spoke to Putin and we had a very good, positive conversation. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And unfortunately, the media is so powerful. I'll give you the best example right now. Uh, a member of uh, of our family was like, "Hey, did y'all see on the news that um, there's a, like a lot of Americans running to sign up to go fight in Ukraine or something like that, volunteering?" And and I and I, I basically said, "Right now, it's the fog of war. Right now, there's a lot of fake." pictures and fake stories and narratives and like oh the the ghost of kiev and all right. this uh, snake island they, they told russian submarines go fuck yourself and it's like <laughs> you know this lady was was blown up it's like no that bitch was from 2018 <laughs> during the gas explosion how many times they trying to blow this bitch up <laughs> so yeah so i'm trying to tell this person like right now is a lot of fake stuff just hang on a little bit and there's a lot of fake news that's what i said she's like no 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 i saw it on the news though yeah i'm like that's what I mean. <laughs> That's, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, why are they all of a sudden the same entities that were like, wear your mask. It came from bat soup. Uh, 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 the jab is hundred percent safe and effective. Like the same apparatus, the same good morning America, the same talking heads, the blue check marks on Twitter, the same outlets are the same ones trying to tell you it's very simple. Everybody Putin bad, Ukraine good and don't worry about nothing else and we all gotta we gotta send 6.4 billion dollars over there we gotta send American blood and treasure over there and and don't worry if NATO don't pay their bills and we gotta go protect people and we're gonna do a regime change and it's it's back to the old system of just war 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 meanwhile my boy Oscar out there didn't nobody have his back so (laughs) I'm ready to drop in and find those fools like, hey, fool, hey, fool, hey, homie, hey, which way, which way is the volcano, big doc? Which way, which way to the volcano, big doc? And once they point me over there, shit, I'm a, uh, I'm a pretend get robbed and then I'm a fuck them up because I already know what bushes they're in, bro. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, thanks. 
We we flying in <laughs> helicopters. Fuck that. It's for my boy Oscar. Pinche John Wick. Vayan con Dios. Sí. Das, 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 das. Che Matrix fool. And then the and Matrix, yeah. Wick. Yeah, yeah, and then we'll we'll have our own distractions and diversions. We'll send a lady out there. There you go. And she'll be like, no, help me, por favor. And we'll catch the bad guys. Hey, bro. speaking of, since Shingo did bring up Ukraine and all the stuff going on, I, I don't know if you have a take on this, Oscar, but do you have any any take on what's going on, but also uh, the memo that was, was, I guess, sent out not more than a week ago about uh, the Biden administration asking our Border Patrol and customs agents to volunteer going <laughs> and protecting the Ukrainian border? <laughs> Uh, that that is I, I and I don't I don't know but I'm just gonna say it I'm I'm gonna be bold. Uh, one of the most incompetent leaders in the world right now is the president of the United States with Mexican president also Amlo is is one of the most incompetent leaders of of you know our of our age. Uh, but I <clears throat> I have a really you know transparent opinion of what is going on. The United States has nothing to do with what is happening in Ukraine and Russia. They have a lot of problems on their own. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you have a lot of problems on your own house. Why are you worried about another problem that has nothing to do with you? Uh, the Clintons have, you know, you got the average Republican saying, oh, it's because the Clintons and now I'm supporting Russia. You have to be kidding me. Before you know that Vladimir Putin has threatened so many times the United States of America. Vladimir Putin is a dictator. He is a communist dictator. He changed the constitution so he can be in government to 2036. <laughs> he changed the constitution for every politician when he gets out of government to not be prosecuted for their crimes. Now everybody is licking the boots of Vladimir Putin on the Republican side. No, 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 no. Your country is going through a lot of problems right now. And if Joe Biden is committing a huge mistake of worrying about what is going on in Ukraine because the Clintons have a lot of money laundering over there, it's not only the Clintons that they Hunter, have a lot of money I think, over there. Yeah, I think Pelosi it's, and Ke John Kerry. The whole world, Those. it is over there, you know, money laundering. And doing. And, and now they're talking about, oh, Ukraine is a really corrupt place, has always been corrupt has always had a lot of sex trafficking, sex slavery, child trafficking, drug trafficking, has always been like that. <clears throat> also Russia, a lot of gun trafficking. So why are the United States trying to get involved with a lot of pro with another problem when you have a humongous problem at your border, you have a, div a racial division like no other right now, the day it was created to divide the country. You have an inflation problem right now in your country, the United States. You have a poverty problem. You have an unemployment problem. And now you're trying to release your troops to go to, to another foreign country. And now you're putting a petition for P CBP, uh, you know, Customs Border Agents to say, you want to go and defend another country when you are seeing these customs, these, these border agents, they have seen horrors at the border. Do you think they're, they're not traumatized and they're going to say, oh, you know what? I, yeah, I'm going to go to Ukraine and see more of this stuff over there. Border agents have seen women being raped, women being killed, kids being drawn and, uh, drowning at the river. Do you think that they want to go and sign up and say, I want to go to Europe? It is so really, it's, it's the mentality of, of the politicians right now of the United States. It's, 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 it's never seen before. I've never seen the United States have this much problems with with politicians right now, infiltrated in their own political parties. It's not only, and excuse me for Republicans, do you have a lot of people that they are supporting this, that they're Republicans. And mm -hmm. there's just a few that I can count with my hand that they're against all this madness that is going on in your country. And there's a few, and you have a lot of leftists that they're pushing for the United States to be involved. But... Uh, you got, uh, we're going to go into details that NATO is this, NATO is that, you know, but the number one thing right here is this is not a problem of the United States of America. And clearly Vladimir Putin said it the other day. He said, if you get involved with me, you're going to suffer and you're going to have consequences for the rest, historically for the rest of your life. So this is a guy that you don't want to mess with. Really, you don't want to mess with this. Why do you want to mess with the problem? If you already have all these problems in your backpack, just 
leave it alone and let them, you know, handle their own situation. Son, make it make sense. Son mamadas, pinche desmadre. The fact, the fact that, how disrespectful is it that they literally say, yo, our customs and border patrol agents are so good at receiving and processing people. They're the best at receiving and processing refugees and migrants and asylum seekers and what have you, right? They're so good at it. They have so much experience that we need to send them to Poland to, to help ease and mitigate that bottleneck situation. It's like, hmm, who is really good, has a lot of practice at processing and receiving people? They're like, call the American media. Well, yeah. and we're going to talk about this here in a little bit after we wrap up with Oscar, but I mean, Pelosi is pushing for this uh, Senate bill that was put on the floor. Uh, it's called the <clears throat> uh, Southern Border for Ukraine, according to, so, hold on, it's called the Defending Ukraine Sovereignty Act of 2022. <laughs> Defending Ukraine's border. <laughs> Defending ah. the Ukraine Sovereignty Act of 2022. Uh, uh, these, wow. These little pur uh, purple hair woke kids have no idea. They, they all changed their avatar. They went from the black fist to the jab and the mask to the, the Ukraine, Ukraine flag. flag. <laughs> yeah. Dude, the PSYOP is real. The pe this, is, this is what I'm trying to explain to my family when like people ask me like, hey, so what's going on? Like, w Make sense of it. And I, I kind of echo what Oscar said, which is like, we don't really have a dog in the fight. We ain't got no business over there. But whatever does happen, we'll have a domino effect because it's like the central banks trying to punk russia and their their currency the ruble they want to crush the ruble and then a ruble whatever it is and then us like we you know their gas pipelines jen Psaki goes on tv and she's like well we're trying to be energy independent but we're gonna go green and it's like bitch who's who makes the batteries who makes the solar panels like are any of those jobs and manufacturing gonna be for us you know what I mean? They never talk about how when we cut emissions by any percentage, how much the other countries raise their emissions percentages. Yeah, China. Tenfold. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, Russia has been having problems a lot with the OPEC. And that was one of the things that, you know, the, the OPEC trying to uh, kneel, make Russia kneel down into the gas prices of, you know, of, of the world. So Russia said, you know what? No, I'm, I'm staying out of it. The, 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 the situation right here that that, that is uh, going back to the statement that Joe Biden said, this is why uh, it is it's, it's important. It, and Joe Biden said, we're going to try to not make Russia be part of the new global economy. So if you're Joe Biden said that, actually, so if you're looking at that global economy, you're you're probably, you know, thinking that this is the new global, you know, the new economic forum that you know, every single global agreement, the United States is in it now. And the only the countries that they don't want to be part of it, mm. uh, you know, China, China uh, Iran, all these leftist radical, you know, countries. They don't want to be part of it because they just don't want to be part of it. But they're trying to bend the knee of these countries and they're going to try to, you know, uh, put sanctions, uh, you know, make them, you know, uh, suffer where the, with ex importing and exporting to all these countries on their products, uh, lift the tariffs, you know, and all the, uh, you know, put tariffs up, uh, you know, prices of tariffs up. So it, this is actually going to be a, a domino effect, like you say. Yeah, like what you said about um, trying to hurt their pockets and saying um, things like, oh, s uh, dump out your vodka, all liquor stores, all restaurants, stop serving vodka so we can hurt Russia. And it's like all of Europe, especially Germany, depends, is super dependent on Russia's gas. So they have the pipelines, the Nord Stream 2, which Biden was like, yeah, that's cool. You can have that. Keystone Pipeline, shut that down. So we're like, <laughs> we're going to sanction you. And it's like, okay, you buy 600, uh, I forget how many. Uh, 600,000. 600,000 barrels a day. So let's us. pour out the vodka, but let's buy all the oil. <laughs> it's like, we're only drinking Tito's from now on. It's like, sh bitch, gas your car Dude. with this fucking Rushki. Well, hey, Definitely. Oscar, I know you had a, an appointment this morning that you rescheduled for us, and we're 45 minutes in. So what do you want to leave the listeners with? Where can they follow you, support you, and keep up with what you got going on next? Thank you so much for the invitation, uh, Rob and Chingo. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys are doing, uh, you know, a great, great job of uh, everything. And Chingo, you know, it's, it's, uh, he's a superstar, man. He can do everything, man. So congratulations, Chingo, to all your audience. Thank you, uh, and thank you all for your support. Uh, you know, God bless you. And behind the cameras, Rob, you're doing a phenomenal. Thanks, brother. Phenomenal. Thanks for having. Uh, thanks for being on. People don't know that, man, but 
the people behind the cameras are the ones that they <laughs> they handle us, man. So thank you so mm -hmm. much, man. Thank you so God bless you. God bless you guys for this invitation. Thank you, man. You have our hundred percent support and everybody follow Oscar at Blue. Tell them all the links and, and where they can follow you. Uh, you can follow me at uh, YouTube, Getter, Twitter, uh, Telegram, and Facebook as Oscar L. Blue. And uh, Instagram, uh, I don't use it that much, but it's Oscar L. Blue Media and Oscar L. Blue Team. Also, Border Network News and, uh, you know, my partner, so Anthony Aguero, so you can follow him on all platforms. Real America's Voice News also. Follow Real America's Voice News, our network. Oh, yeah. Awesome, man. We have to see if we can meet up in person. Um I don't want to, I'll ask you off air kind of the area of where you're at, but, uh, but we're touring, we're touring a lot. Maybe we'll be near you. I know you're always reporting on the ground, uh, boots on the ground. So it'd be awesome to meet you. And, and if you're ever in Texas, uh, <laughs> reporting on the border, I mean, Hey man, we'd love to have you and, you know, show you around, pick your brain. All right. Thank you so much. Hey, hey, don't let them take your guns, Jingle. Oh, hell no. <laughs> hey, this is Texas, brother. I, this country? <laughs> this country. Thanks, brother. You have a great day. Godspeed, brother. All thank right. you. Thank you so much. God bless you guys.